What's up, gang? This is Ken Zer, Ken Zilligan, Zika Milligan, and Villa Villa Trilligan. And last, and we're back on Face Day Night. Last episode, I left y'all on a cliffhanger. Come on, what did y'all think? Y'all think I'm a fight? Y'all think I'm a flight? Y'all think I'm a fight? Y'all think I'm a not fight? Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Which one am I gonna do? Which one am I gonna do? Hold on, hold on. Obviously, I'll go on the offensive. There's a master at Ryudo Temple. And I need to stop them from sucking up magical energy from everyone in town as soon as possible. I agree with Saber. I'm not thrilled to be the one making the move here, but it depends on the opponent too. If we want to find out what sort of master we're dealing with, we should go to Ryudo Temple as soon as possible. Then it is time to shut out, Shiro. Then it is time to head out, Shiro. I am very glad to see you being so proactive. Fine, there's nothing I can do or say since you've already decided, but just be careful. Dosaka. I'm going to rest. I have no interest in a battle I can't win. If you aren't back tomorrow, I'll at least go collect your remains in the spirit of our alliance. Thank you. What the hell? Why would she say something so ominous? That is likely Rin's way of warning us. We are certain to face defenses meant to ward off intruders in the Ryudo Temple. Do we need to pass through the enemy traps and beat the Master, the Lord of the Stronghold? Well, you're right, but... I'm not so enthusiastic and confident that I think I'm going to go in there and beat the Master. I just want to learn their identity and motives. If all goes well, we might be able to avoid battle, and if things get hairy, we can retreat. I will never let her suffer or look so painful again. We'll just have to retreat right away if it starts to look dangerous. <laughs> oh man. That was one hell of a burp. The clouds zip by overhead. Must be strong wind up there. Master, it is almost night midnight. Yeah, the town's gone to sleep, so it's a good time to head out. I nod as I grab my Shinai bag. Inside, I've packed a bamboo sword I found in the shed. It's not the greatest weapon for going up against a servant, but as long as my strength in the magecraft works, I should be able to survive at least one attack. Say, but we're, go we're only going to Ryudo Temple just to check things out. We're going to see who the master is and what class their servant is. We're not here to start a fight. Understood. But if the enemy desires a fight or if I determine you are in danger, I will not hold back. As long as we are heading into enemy territory, please prepare yourself for the possibility of death. The possibility of death. The scales of fate stay night way on way on one end the mass Fuck! The scales of fate stay night way on one end the master at Ryudo Temple and on the other us the intruders. I gotta read like a fucking third grader, bro. Also, also I'm not gonna understand. The scales are balanced right now, but they may tip one way or the other tonight. Man, let's fuck this nigga up, bro. No, nah, hold on. My fault. Man, let's fuck this bitch up, bro. We head west from the intersection and hurry along the empty road. Ryudo Temple is located at the end of the gently slopping, sloping, nigga, sloping mountain path opposite to the more developed Shinto. There's a long set of stairs. My fat ass could not make it up there. The road that leads up to one of the tallest mountains in Fuyuki is all but swallowed and up in an ominous darkness. Saber, do you sense any servants around? Yes. I cannot be certain of anything so specific, but I can definitely sense a servant. Saber's detection ability seemed to, be, seemed to be weakened, probably by the bounded field set up over Ryudo Temple. It is an ill-favored wind tonight. Shiro, do not leave my side, even for a moment. I just nod and answer, then start up the stone stairs. Bitch, you better not leave her fucking side. The air feels tense. Shrouded in the dark of the night, the forest echoes with soft, ruffling sounds. Rustling. With every step I take, worry gnaws at my stomach. The temple gate finally comes into view. Nothing's happened so far. No sign of the enemy and the temple gates are wide open as if inviting us inside. This shit is a trap! 
Shira, stop. Uh huh. Is that an enemy saber? Yes. But it is not a servant. Their presence is too weak. It is likely a familiar task of surveillance. We can ignore it, but. There must be something about that surveillance familiar that makes her hesitate. Saber frowns and glares at the temple gates just a few steps ahead of us. Saber, is something bothering you? I do not know. I cannot tell if I'm feeling this chill because of the familiar or if it is whatever that's protecting this temple gate. There seems to be a gatekeeper of some sort, but they appear to be absent at the moment. I do not want to admit it, but it seems we are lucky that I am fortunate not to have to confront whoever is protecting this gate. So they're the gatekeeper, but they're not here right now. Yes, they already know we are here. There could only be two reasons the gatekeeper is pulled back. Do you know what those reasons might be, Shira? Gatekeeper was either pulled back to hide from us, or they're going to let us through the gate but don't intend to let us leave. Either way, we're not going to accomplish anything unless we get inside. It's a trap, Saber. Can you tell what's going on in there? No. All I can say is that I can sense the presence of a servant. Got it. I guess we won't be learning anything unless we go inside. I feel like I did the bad thing. <laughs> Saber nods. Let's go. Whatever they do to us, we're not gonna get. We're not getting anything out of this trip until we see our opponent's faces. Saber and I approach the temple gate. For a brief moment, the clouds drift across the Tsukihime moon, swallowing up its light. Our vision falls into darkness. Oh shit! That was Ryder! In the darkness, I thought I saw a beautiful snake slithering between the trees. Wait, Saber, I thought I just... I stopped Saber who's trying to walk through the temple gate. Her golden hair whips around, but suddenly... Force transportation. But that's impossible. There's no such thing as transference magic in this a Ah, oh, but Caster! Saber's figure distorts. What kind of magecraft is this? Saber becomes distorted like a mirage and... This is bad! Pull back, Saber! Your body's fading! No, Shiro. You are the one who's being transported. Hurry, take my hand! Tra transport? Like teleportation? Shiro, reach out to the truth! You're being pulled in! Saber kicks the ground and grabs hold of my arm, but then... You whore! The dark figure of a servant cuts from in from the inside. No, from the side. Ryder, you bitch! You let your guard down, Saber. Your resistance to Magecraft is backfired. If you weren't so powerful, you would have been able to protect him. What? You are a servant! Black and silver cla figures clash. Saber, kick her ass! Saber versus Ryder. The two confront one another at the top of the stone steps. Saber, fuck her up! What? Saber! Saber! I feel myself being, I feel myself pulled through dimensions, twisted out of mine and through others, then de de deposited back into reality. Oh, fuck! My blood flows backward. For a moment, my organs flip inside out and I'm overwhelmed by nausea. Oh my. I meant to hook a dragon, but it seemed to have caught something much smaller in my net. The fuck? I turn around to face whatever's behind me. I don't have the time to figure out who it is. I swing the wooden sword behind me, not even taking it out of the Shinai bag. The fuck? I'm blown away. Something strikes the side of my chest and my body sinks into a watery surface. I'm fucking dead. I fucking died, okay. Huh, what the? The liquid turns red. My body, the whole right side of my chest is gone. 
What a stupid boy. You walked into my temple equipped with barely anything in the in the way of magic resistance. It appears Saber was not blessed with the proper master. The purple robed figure snickers. I'm dizzy. I need to get up and take Saber's hand, but I'm shaky and my body is in, uh, but I'm shaky and my body. Fuck. Worried about Saber? Don, I'll take Saber. I need a noble phantasm to defeat Berserker. You'll die here and now, but she will live on as my slave. I don't have any strength in me. My fingers, they're cold as ice, my consciousness fades into darkness and mud. Goodbye, boy. You're not even worth keeping as a slave, weak as you are. But I will take your command spells and use them far better than you ever would have. A crooked blade glints in the darkness and begins cutting out my command spells. I'm in black murky water. The only thing the only thing my motionless eyes see is the cloud swallowing up the Tsukihime moon. Tiger Dojo, the fuck is that? Beyond here lies Tiger Dojo. Fuck no! Seems I've hit a corpse party wrong in. Well, damn. I I guess we don't fight. What the fuck? How long was that? Twelve minutes. Damn. I guess we don't fight. Yeah. No. I agree with Tosaka. We shouldn't be going there yet. What? Are you saying you will not fight either? That is ridiculous. What was the point of me resting then? We must strike first, especially now that we know where our enemy is. I know that, but we need to wait, Saber. If the master of Ryudo Temple is so thoroughly prepared, they'll have set a trap for us. Rushing in without a plan is suicide. Tosaka's right, we should at least wait until Archer's recovered. These are the risks we must always face. I do not expect victory without injury or setback. Even if the enemy traps pierce my body, I can fight I can fight on so long as I have my head. No matter how badly injured I am, it is worth the risk if we can defeat this master, is it not? What? Don't be a fucking dumbass! Who would ever say it's okay to get hurt? It's fine going in knowing the risk, but a suicidal mission is fucking stupid. As your master, I'm not letting you do something so dangerous, you dumb fuck! Going over to Rodrigo Temple would be suicide, no question. The lone road leading up to the temple is sure to be packed with traps and obstacles, maybe both. It's one thing to go in expecting the dangers, but doing it without a plan to deal with them is suicidal. No matter how powerful Saber is, she's still held back by my weakness. I would hate for her to push herself. Whatever. If it ends up like it did last time, I can't agree to just charge in blindly. I guess I'm the dumbass this time. I did not think to hear you say such a thing again. Listen, master. Servants are meant to get hurt. I would not allow my master to avoid battle simply for fear of that eventuality. Fine, it doesn't matter if you don't allow it. If you're gonna keep being so reckless, I'll stop you as many times as I have to. If you don't like that, then hurry up and heal yourself. You're still not fully healed, are you? Not so much that it should inter interfere with my ability to fight. Delaying combat because you are concerned about a wound is pointless. Saber just won't change her fucking mind. Why doesn't she understand no matter what I say? Yeah, well, I'm not budging. You lost the Berserker before. Are you gonna push through and keep fighting so we can both be defeated again? You've gotta be fucking kidding me. I don't want to get killed all over again. And then... I expect Saber to argue. Instead, she just draws in a breath in. That was cruel, Shiro. Her tone is apologetic. I'm sorry to be unfair. I'm still not willing to attack yet. I know I can't let the Master of Ryudo Temple do as they please, but we're in no condition to fight. If we rush in now and are defeated, then who's going to stop the Master of Ryudo Temple? Listen, we're going to attack, but only after your wound is healed, and we're in peak condition. If you have a problem with that, go find another damn master. Understood.
If Master insists. Oh, well, we made her sad. Saber's voice is quiet as she answers, and then she falls silent. Our conversation ends there. Tosaki and Saber both go back to their rooms. I'm left alone in the living room and find myself starting to regret what I did. Well, it's too damn late. I could have said it differently, so why did I have to say it the way I did? Oh, shit. Fucking jump scare. Why was I only able to convince her with words that cut her so deep? Because she's so fucking stubborn. Interlude. The fuck? It's a quiet, windless night. It's past midnight. midnight. Darkness blankets the sky. The town itself is like a dark sea, illuminated only by moonlight. Overhead, the clouds move across the sky. At ground level, there's not a breath of wind. Higher up, the air must be roaring as the clouds swim by. There is at least some wind. Maybe she hears the inaudible wind. She mutters quietly as she looks up into the windy sky. The young girl known as Saber stands quietly in the middle of the yard, glaring up at the sky. Her golden hair is beautiful, even in the dark of the night. Her clear green eyes remain on the moon as, they, as it flickers in and out of view. She glances toward the corner of the yard once. There's an old shed. Her lord sleeps there. If you say you will not fight, fine. It's a heavy clang. The sound of iron melts into the darkness without reaching anyone's ears. The moon hides and reveals itself once again. As the clouds above float past, the girl's appearance changes radically. Solid heavy armor. She can no longer be called a girl in her blue ra raiment. She is now shrouded in steely armor, woven by magical energy intense enough that it would overwhelm all others. In her hand, she holds an invisible sword, concealed by the same magical energy that surpasses human understanding. The figure, once considered un undefeatable in the battlefield, proves that someone like her still exists in this day and age. Though her sword is invisible, the majestic air she exudes proves her exceptional skill as a swordsman. This is what has made her Saber, the hero of the sword said to be the strongest of all the seven servants, a knight among knights who remains, who remains ever civil and acts according to her lord's will. Whatever the other heroic spirits may be like, she remains the ideal swordsman who would never defy her lord. But that ends tonight. She is here, defying her lord's orders. Rather, she is not truly disobeying her lord. It's just her way of bringing her lord victory, the result of her own determination. He is too naive. If he continues on this path, it will lead only to the death of- at an, He'll only lead- FUCK! He is too naive. If he continues on this path, it would only lead to- It would only- FUCK! He is too naive. If he continues on this path, it would lead only to death at another master's hands. But this master will never change his ways. Then it must be your duty to be heartless. If a master will not fight, then his sword must. My wounds have may I, my wounds have not healed. I cannot expect a supply of magical energy from master. But death still poses no hindrance in battle. After confirming her own ability, she returns her gaze to the moon. She has no concern for the shed where her lord sleeps any longer. Now that she is armed and wearing her armor. The only thing on her mind is defeating her enemies. The moon darkens. The moment a large, a large cloud covers the sky, Saber jumps over the moon or the mansion grounds. She runs through the darkness. The silvery swordsman rushes to the sleeping town. She has but one destination, Ryudo Temple, sitting at the heart of the sacred mountain on the town's outskirts. Even Saber understands how difficult it would be to single-handedly defeat the master lurking in the temple. Shiro is correct. She is bound to suffer great injury, or at worst, die herself. But how can she call herself a servant if she cannot do the impossible? Servants are driven by their superior abilities and unassailable pride. 
They are proud as heroes and have earned that confidence in numerous battles they fought. As heroic spirits whose lore has been passed down are respected since ancient times, they cannot lose no matter who they face. She cannot even imagine defeat. She is no exception, however much of her innocence may be still left to her. Being granted the title as Saber is all the more reason she cannot ignore that pride. And that pride will not allow her to just sit by and do nothing when she can face her enemy. And so she must brave any traps that may await her and face her enemy even if she is alone. And she, if, if she has no chance of winning, then she must simply use her sword to create one. Her sword is a celebrated blade and has cut countless enemies down. As long as she has invisible air, there is nothing for her to fear. She runs through the mountain pass and up the road leading to the temple. After she cuts through the mountain pass, an imposing stone staircase awaits her. Ah, this is certainly... It is certainly different than the Ryudo temple she remembers. The air is stagnant. The wind is barren. The land's lifeline was contaminated long ago. This place is a land of death. The moment one enters, there can be no escape. She does not hesitate. Saber does not so much as break stride as she runs up the steps. Scenery flies by. Her footsteps echo on the stone stairs and the mountain begins to stir. The stairs are long, stretching across a great distance. The temple gates are far, even for Saber. Who shoots up the stairs like an arrow? So long as the stair so long at the stairs that that is a, that is an impossible for one to pass through the gate undetected. An ambush surely awaits along the way. Reaching the gate will not be easy. Whatever schemes may await her, she must simply smash through them and keep moving. Nothing will stop her. Even were the berserker to appear before her, she would break through. Such is her determination, her confidence. She reached the top. Just as she's about to reach the temple gates and the obstacle presents itself. Who the fuck is that? Ugly ass nigga. Saber stops. Despite her determination to push through no matter what enemy she faces, she is surprised by what she finds. It appears so naturally, like a breeze. The man appears before her lacking any trace of enmity, but leaves not a single opening for an attack. Saber stops and readies her invisible sword. The man before her, backlit by the moon, ignores Saber's menacing glare as if it were nothing to him. Samurai ka? A samurai. She has heard about them, but she is bewildered by the sight of one. This is her second Holy Grail War. Even though she has seen many other heroic spirits, this is her first time seeing a servant like him. Sweat beads on Saber's brow. She isn't afraid. Rather, she is struggling to comprehend the situation. It is not as though she has, it is not as if she has never encountered strange servants. Certainly, there was no stranger and more mysterious servant than the archer of the previous war. By comparison, the servant, the servant before her is hardly frightening and possesses no incredible weaponry. And that is exactly what makes it strange. She senses nothing from the man. There is no doubt he is a servant, but he seems to possess neither a noble phantasm nor magical energy. He should be an easy foe. Their fight should end in a single blow, but her instincts give her one very simple warning. Don't underestimate him. This servant has a means of inflicting instant death. She can't get any closer. This katana is unconventionally long for a Japanese sword, making it hard to gauge spacing. But more than that, Saber's position puts her at a huge disadvantage. The man stands at the top of the stairs, and Saber stands below him. He's about five meters from her. His sword will reach her before she can rush him. But she feels nothing from his sword. Repelling it should be easy. He should not be afraid to step in, but Saber senses somehow that she should not. 
Sabra adjusts her grip on her sword and glares at the enemy ahead of her. She may not know his identity, but she but she should at least be able to determine his class. I ask of you, what servant are you? Sabra does not expect an answer. After a brief smile. Servant Assassin, Sasaki Kojiro. The servant's reply is given in a sing-song voice. What? Saber cannot help but be surprised. Servants generally conceal their identities. What sort of servant would bluntly and proudly give his name? You, why? Why is a boring question. It is only polite to introduce myself before a duel. All the more against an opponent as beautiful as you. How odd. Then, that you should react as you have. The man who introduced himself as Sasaki Kojiro, the assassin, appears to enjoy Saber's confusion. There is no way Saber knows. She has no idea this servant is a swordsman who wields a long sword called Mona, Mona Hoshi Zhao and was rumored to have been an unrivaled swordsman during the Keichiro era in Japan. Knowing, of course, would change nothing. The man's origin is unknown, and even his existence is uncertain. His story was told only by word of mouth, and there is perhaps only one person in the world who knows the true identity of the man who was hailed as the greatest swordsman in the world. The man who never left a mark in history, but was Sasaki Kojiro's archenemy, and the only one to have ever defeated him. So how can this man be called a hero? The assassin, Sasaki Kojiro, is a presence far removed from Saber herself, who among heroic spirits can know the abilities of a swordsman who cannot himself normally be, be a heroic spirit. However, two things are clear for her. One is that the man before her is an enemy, and the other is that he has willingly identified himself. You are certainly correct. A nice honor demands revealing oneself when addressed, and that one should return the gesture in kind. Saber's voice is grave. Revealing her true name poses an immense risk. She cannot reveal her true name, even under torture, nor does she have any intention of doing so. However, this is only in the name of her pursuit of victory. For this same reason, she could not tarnish her knight's honor. Kojiro, you said. Assassin, I am. Say no more. I know you were the sword who must give their name in kind if I do it so first. It was I who was boorish. The man descends the stairs gracefully. Assassin confronts Saber taking slow steps down the stairs. I need not to know my enemy in this way. If we are to battle, we shall speak with our swords. Am I wrong, Saber? This should be no surprise. I do not know what you are holding, but this murder and intent surrounding you certainly belongs to a swordsman. That beautiful, dazzling aura of a swordsman. You can only be Saber. He takes a step closer. Assassin descends his own steps, and he points his sword towards Saber. I do not care to know your true name. All that matters to me is that the servant known as Saber falls by my blade. There is nothing to discuss. It is not what it is. Is that not what it is to be a servant in any case? The swordsman laughs joyfully. I see. Yes, that is true. As Saber speaks, she readies her sword. That's the spirit. Then let us duel, Saber. I must see your swordsmanship, said to be the greatest of all servants. A silver light leaps, solid and soft. The battle between two very different swordsmen begins under the moonlight. I wake up to a searing pain in my chest. It feels like I've just had a bad dream. Why does my chest hurt? My heart feels like it's burning. 
Actually, it feels more like heat from outside has been forced into my body. From outside, I doubt myself briefly. But before I could think of what it might be, I found myself rushing outside. Saber, are you here? I opened a sliding screen door to Saber's room. She's not here. Don't tell me she... No, there's no doubt. If she's not here, she w went to Ryudo Temple on her own. That fucking idiot! She hasn't healed, so why should... Why was she? I'm so angry, my head is starting to hurt. I didn't tell her I wasn't going to fight. I just... I just didn't want her to get hurt like that again. There's no point in fuming here. I need to hurry to Ryudo Temple. I can't let Saber fight alone. Well, I don't know what good I can do to do her, but if I get there, maybe I can do something. She's a girl. Why can't she just behave herself? I run. I don't even take time to change. Out front, I grab a bike and pedal as fast as I can. I pedal down the hill without braking. It'll take at least 40 minutes to Ryudo Temple even if I rush. I don't know how long it's been since Saber left, but I need to get her I need to get her as fast as I can. Another another interlude, nigga? For real? The blades cross. The edges of both swords come into contact again and again. Stroke after stroke, stroke in my sword shape. and katana of luck spark as they strike and parry. Several dozen exchanges like this later and neither opponent has changed position. Assassin standing higher up on the steps hold his ground. Saber who is trying to advance up the stone steps can't get any closer to Assassin. Over time she bleeds more and more energy. One of Saber's many attempts at rushing in. Assassin effortlessly swings his long blade, fully a meter and a half, and halts Saber's advance. No, he's not simply preventing an advance. If Saber's blade is lightning, Assassin's katana is a hurricane. Though Assassin may be no match for her speed or strength, the flexible trajectory of his blade sweeps aside Saber's every attack. The ricocheting katana gains speed and flips back towards Saber's neck like a gust of wind. Even as Saber dodges the blow by only a hair breath, the long katana flicks back towards her giving her not a moment of rest. In contrast to Saber's straight sword, Assassin's blade is curved. Assassin's cutting edge is graceful, but it only draws a long extended arc. He shouldn't be able to match Saber's sword as it moves in a straight line, but he somehow cancels out that difference. She suddenly stops. Her blade isn't moving fast enough to block Assassin's counterattack. She falls back a pace, knowing it's the only way she can avoid the incoming strike. Assassin's katana traces a fascinatingly beautiful arc, but at the same time it is so fast that it is nearly impossible to follow. Is this seeming, is this seeming impossibly, is this seeming impossibility owed to Assassin's skill, or is it owed instead to his saber being at a disadvantaged position in their battle? Unable to reach a clear conclusion, Saber continues dodging Assassin's strikes and turns the turns aside the blade as it arcs towards her neck with her own weapon. The next thing she knows. <laughs> you stepped down the stairs. That's the extent of his katana's reach. It would be able to rush up and close down once he sweeps his sword aside, but for some reason she can't, just can't do it. It must be owed to the enemy's superb skills and her own position below her, below him, which puts her at a disadvantage. Saber bites her lip. The fuck? Saber bites her lip thinking she wouldn't have such a hard time against that long katana if they were on flat ground. This is certainly a problem. I had not expected fighting against an invisible blade would be so challenging. 
Assassin is unmoved. He's fighting purely to defend. He need not chase after a retreating saber, nor does she have any reason to give up the advantage of the higher ground. This must be the first time you have seen a katana, yes? My sword is quite wicked, and no ordinary opponent would fall to but a single blow. You, on the other hand, have evaded it spectacularly. This pleases me, Saber. Additionally, your cutting technique is marvelous. You're able to do so much with that small frame of yours. You must be impeccably trained. Assassin watches Saber, his posture relaxed, perhaps simply because he needn't go on the offensive. The tip of his blade wavers, losing strength. But Saber cannot seize the opportunity. The man is not holding a stance. A long katana like that can only be wielded as long as the master is able to swing the sword from any position. Is something the matter? Surely you are not done. That invisible sword is not simply for show, is it? You do not know when to stop talking. The sword and katana clash. I have you now. The long sword stops mid-swing. Assassin grins, placing his katana where it stopped at where it stopped the invisible sword, then parries again. While Saber catches the flash coming out her neck. Even Saber knows. She's been able to block Assassin's unfamiliar sword work thanks to her invisible sword. Her invisible sword can confuse the opponent's senses both offensively and defensively. Assassin not following through on his attack is proof of this. Not knowing how long Saber's sword is makes it too dangerous for Assassin to close in on her. If Assassin were to step in and attack Saber, he would do so when... When Saber tries to smash Assassin's forehead, that attack... Assassin dodges it completely as he takes just a step back. Yoshi. Ah, I have a good idea of its length now. It is roughly three shaku. Three shaku long and four sun wide. Its shape, let's see. As befits your name, it is that of a typical western sword. Assassin may have spoken calmly, but his exceptional skill at appraising the blade is clear. Saber strike had been so fast that even were her sword visible, it would have been almost impossible to see. And yet... Not only has he managed to defend himself from the invisible blade, he's also figured out its size and shape. I cannot believe it. You have measured my sword without employing any magecraft or having a satisfying exchange with our blades. Surprised? However, this is but a trick of a mere street performer, in my opinion. As a wielder of a wicked sword, such tricks are the only things I get to practice. I see. Your strategy was simply to parry my strikes to avoid being wounded. I can see now why a coward like you would call himself a wicked swordsman. Well, you must forgive me for not properly trading blows with you. You see, I have this long katana. Were I to properly lock blades with you, it would certainly break. You must be the sword to go all out, but I cannot. I am unable to put my full might into every strike with this katana. So it has always been with this katana. Western swords cut with sheer power. Our blades, however, rely on speed and technique. Do you now see how different our fighting styles are? But then again, it would be disappointing to leave matters like this. Now, Saber, I believe the time has come to stop concealing your true power. Assassin. Do you believe I am taking it easy on you? Are you saying you're not? I do not know what your intentions are, but for you to fight with your sheath on is somewhat insulting. Do you believe I am unworthy of being taken seriously as your opponent? You was fighting with the sheath on? Saber! Shit. That's hard as fuck. I'm not gonna lie. That's hard as fuck. I agree. Ah, you do not seem as though you intend to comply. Very well. If you decline to reveal your own, then I shall show you my secret technique first. And with that, the swordsman with the long katana drifts down next to Saber. 
For an assassin to give up his advantage position is as good as inviting defeat. He may be a superb swordsman, but it was the landscape of the battleground that gave him the advantage. If the two of them were to fight on level ground, Sabre would have no trouble repelling assassin's attacks and taking his head then and there. Assassin should know this as well. So why? Brace yourself or you will die, Saber. Saber instinctively reacts to the smoothness in his voice, for he is speaking the truth. Assassin descending the stairs has not put her in an advantage position. Her intuition, which has enabled her to triumph in so many battles, warns her of her mistake. She readies her invisible sword. There's no room to hesitate. What matters is that she has to attack with the sword before Assassin swings his long katana. Oh, that's so hard. Roughly three meters separate the two. He readies himself. The stance he takes now is one he has not taken in their, in their battle so far. Secret technique. Saber charges. The long katana is meaningless now. Saber! Saber, you don't know how these samurai niggas move, bro. That's not smart. The moment she draws near Assassin, the katana will become a liability to him. Saber, you don't know how these assassin niggas are. And yet, swallow reversal. Such logic means little to a swordsman like him. Lightning strikes. Faster than even Saber's blade, the demonic blow strikes down in a single line. But it's not as if Saber cannot block such an attack. She quickly raises her sword to defend, repelling Assassin's attack. Even Assassin will be left open after an attack like that is turned aside. Saber, you don't know how these Samurai niggas are, bro. You never watch Samurai X. You don't know the Bateau side. You don't know how these niggas are. You don't know Shishio. Was it Shishio or Sashomaru? Sashomaru is fucking Inuyasha. Even his sass will be left open after an attack like that is turned aside. In that split second interval, as Saber attempts to cut through Assassin's stomach, he turns that. He says. <laughs> Swiftly thrusting in her influence, Instinct. Saber rolls down the stone steps. She rolls away as if she is fleeing. She makes no effort, in even, no effort even to soften her landing. All Saber does is frantically hurl herself down the stairs, slowing for nothing. <laughs> Saber stops rolling and gets to her feet. Above her on the stairs, she sees a swordsman staring at his ease. Standing at his ease. Ah, oh, you managed to evade my secret technique. I should expect no less, Saber. You are far and away the superior of a swallow. I cannot believe it. That was... Ah, oh, it's nothing to be impressed by. It is simply something I thought of when I considered how to sway or slay a swallow. He raises his long katana up high. The motion is done as if he mim as if to mimic the demonic sword's motions he demonstrated earlier to intimidate Saber. Can you see this, Saber? Swallows avoid any attacks by trying to catch the wind. Fast or slow, it doesn't matter. The sword always disturbs the atmosphere. No matter what sword it might be, swallows feel that tremor and react by changing the direction by which they are flying. And so, no attack can slay a swallow. A sword can only move along a single line. It cannot catch a swallow, which is which can fly through the air in all directions. So your only option is to deny them any path of escape. The first sword attacks the swallow. The second sword surrounds the escaping swallow as it reads those movements. But they are fast. Long as this katana is, the second sword will surely not reach the swallow in time. If I hope to capture the swallow, I would need to strike the second sword at the very same instant as the first. But such is well beyond human ability. I accepted the truth of this impossibility. However, 
Unfortunately for you, I had nothing better to do with my time. They say determination is the key to success. And the next thing I knew, I had managed it. A simple, worthless idea like killing a swallow became a secret technique that created a prison by employing multiple simultaneous strikes of the sword. Saber cannot help but disagree with this matter-of-fact narrative. It is untrue. His technique is not as simple as he claims. Execute two attacks simultaneously. Impossible. The two blades struck at exactly the same time. In that moment, there existed two separate katana. A multi-dimensional refraction phenomenon. A servant whose skills reached the level of a noble phantasm without using magecraft but by skill alone. It is most certainly to be admired. That single blow made it very clear. Sasaki Kojiro does not possess a noble phantasm as heroic spirits typically do. All he has is his magical sword and its sheer power, reaching the realm of the gods. What's astonishing is that this man, a mere human, has managed to stand on equal ground with a heroic spirit who possesses a noble phantasm. But my footing was bad. My swallow reversal typically employs three slices. If I had more room, I could have added my horizontal slash. I would assume so. Otherwise, the attack would be incomplete. If everything were to happen at the exact same time, the second sword's trajectory would naturally slow down. To compensate, there must be a third horizontal attack to prevent the opponent from escaping to the side. A quick study indeed. No wonder you managed to evade my secret technique. How wonderful, Saber. I had so cursed my summoning to this material world, but that lament ends tonight. An opportunity to face an opponent that would have been impossible in my lifetime, and a chance to use my secret attack on them is enough to make this summoning well worth it. Assassin readies his sword again and descends the stone steps. He must be after Saber's head. Saber's not confident that she'll be able to dodge that secret technique again. Like Lancer Gay Bulg, Assassin's Swallow Reversal is a technique that one cannot allow the wielder to use. Except unlike Gay Bulg, against which they are against which one can defend once they understand it what, what it is, and know that it will strike the heart. There is no defense against Assassin's Secrets technique. They cannot be evaded even when no even when one knows what it is. If there is a defense, it lies in preventing him from using the attack. The only way to defeat him is to deliver a devastating blow before a set can unleash his secret technique. I see. I should not have taken it so easy on you. She lowers both her hands. Saber drops the tip of her invisible sword as if driving it into the ground and glares up at Assassin as he approaches. Oh. So are you finally resolved to go all out, Saber? Saber stops descending the steps and readies his secret tech. Fuck! Assassin stops descending. Fuck! Assassin stops descending the steps and readies to go all out. Fuck! Assassin stops descending the steps and readies his secret technique once more. Saber looks at him bravely. I too have no complaints. Will you be able to endure my attack, Assassin? Saber releases her own restraints. The air trembles, as if responding to her will. Her sword releases a, tor a torrential gust of wind. Assassin retreats several steps. The gale force winds, the gale force winds released from Saber's sword are extraordinary. Even the thick trees on either side of the temple gates creak and groan. So strong is the wind, it all but explodes outward from her blade. The atmosphere sealed within is released and roars outward in all directions. Saber's sword is a gust of wind that could easily carry off a human being. This is her blade's power. The invisible air as the name implies. A sword that has sealed up wind. The sword sheathed in compressed wind. Reflects and retracts light to give it the appearance of being invisible. This is what happens when the wind is released. The released air seeks to escape and dissipates into its surroundings in chaotic gusts. During that time, her sword's commanding magecraft allows her to freely manipulate the raging wind. As Saber possesses incredible amounts of magical energy, 
she should be able to maintain the bounded field for a few minutes. The truth of this is made apparent by the fact that her sword, even after releasing so much energy, remains invisible. This is like a typhoon. However, the howling winds do not die down. The unleashed winds are about to engulf Assassin. This cannot be all of it. I shall see every skill you have concealed, Saber! Assassin closes in, despite the raging, blinding wind. Saber's arm moves. The wind-infused blade roars. What the hell is that? When I reach Ryudo Temple, I'm greeted by the sound of air rushing at me like a typhoon. That must be Saber over there. At the top of the stairs in front of the temple gates, I see an armored figure who must be Saber fighting someone wearing a kimono. The wind swirls around Saber and the surrounding trees creak under the gale force intensity. Wait, damn, I don't think I can get close. The wind is so intense I can't even keep my eyes open. Head down as I manage to fight my way closer to the stairs. But the wind only gets stronger. I can't. At this rate, I can't get closer to Saber. For a hand, I can see Saber fighting someone, but I can't do anything. No, even if I manage to get closer to Saber in this wind, I'll only hold her back. My left hand hurts again. The command spells and grins on the back of my hand tingle. I don't know what that means, but every time my hand tingles, I can't help but remember that scene. Damn it! Screw this! I close my eyes and stretch my hand toward the stairs. I get down on my hands and knees, hoping to avoid being blown off my feet and begin crawling up the stairs. The wind intensifies. Even a novice mage like me can tell incredible amounts of magical energy are raging above me. My command spells tingle. The roar of the wind warns me something is happening abo up above. W wait, could this be? Saber's magical energy. If it is, why would she do something so reckless in her state? No, should she be doing something like that? Saber can't recover magical energy. She, sh she shouldn't be wasting it like this. I need to step in and handle the fighting and have Saber support me instead, or she might run out of magical energy. I stand up and start running up the stairs. Now's not the time to be crawling. I don't know what Saber has in mind, but if I have to stop her. So I try to dash toward the temple gate. Something like a dagger flies right by me. I don't know what miracle let me dodge it. Who's there? I turn to look away from the stairs into the trees. There's no doubt about it. I didn't notice it in this torrential wind, but there's someone hiding nearby. You coward! Quit hiding and come the fuck out! I shout forever as hiding behind the tree line. The strong wind should have drowned out my voice. To my surprise, my voice echoes up the stairs. The wind died down. I look up towards the temple gate. There. I see a man in a kimono wielding a long sword and Saber's back. That's enough, Saber. Someone's trying to steal a glance at your sacred sword. The man in the kimono smiles as he speaks. Like me, he's staring out into the forest. If we continue, neither of us will emerge victorious. Whoever's hiding so cravenly in the trees may attack whoever survives our duel. Or they may simply be observing, hoping to learn about your hidden blade. In either case, I do not care to involve myself. The man turns to climb the stairs, seeming totally disinterested. Stop! Do you not intend to settle our match, assassin? Should you attempt to pass with the temple gates once again, we shall settle things. I would not allow any to pass this gate, no matter who they may be. That, unfortunately, is my only role. If you plan on turning back, I have no intention of stopping you. That fool hiding beyond in the trees, though, is another matter. Should I find myself disliking them, I will not allow the men, even dead, 
Yeah. Nor will I let them leave alive. Assassin continues up the stairs. You are manipulated, Saber. But the same goes for me, and as I did not notice whoever was lurking in the shadows. Had we continued, I could have shown you the power of my secret technique. But we were interrupted. You should consider yourself fortunate. Saber hangs her head in regret. Her intent to kill fades. Not because of Assassin's words, but because Saber must have realized that keeping up the fight would leave her at a disadvantage. Come now. Your escort's here too. That boy over there must be your master. I suggest you leave this place before that fool spying on us decides to target him. And just like that, Assassin disappears. It must be his way of telling us he won't attack unless we keep going. Saber says nothing. She just stands there silently, her back to me. Hey, Saber! Even when I call to her, she doesn't answer. It seems strange, so I begin climbing the steps. Saber's armor vanishes, defenseless and in her simple blue clothing. She sways on a spot without turning around. I catch Saber in my arms as she falls backward down the stairs. She doesn't move a muscle. She's unconscious, eyes shut in pain. We finally get home. It took me two hours to carry Saber back from Yudo Temple. I was worried the whole uh, I was worried the whole return trip, but we managed to get back safely. I lay Saber down in the hallway. Saber was really light. She only weighs about 40 kilos, so it shouldn't have tired me out so much. Or it wouldn't have if she had been still. I had no idea that carrying a sleeping person, even a girl, could be so much work. My fatigue is more mental than physical. I feel her I feel her I feel of her soft skin when I picked her up. Her quiet breathing on me, it was all so distracting. Why is she just faint like that? I look at Saber as she lays there sleeping. She's probably not completely unconscious. Even if she looks like she is out cold, she might open her eyes the moment I call her name. Damn. There was so much I wanted to tell her when I left the house. But I can't say anything with her sleeping looking like that. Fine. I'll give you a earful when you wake up, Saber. Even now, I keep my voice to a whisper. The moment I reach out to pick her up again. Look, I don't care what you're into or what you plan on doing next. It really not, it's really not my business, but... For some reason, Sosaka's in the hallway watching even though it's after 2 in the morning. Oh shit, Tosaka! What? You're like you just saw a ghost. I'm not gonna say anything, so you just, just go ahead and do whatever you were gonna do. I just got up to get a glass of water. No, you got it all wrong. This isn't what you think, really. I mean, it's a long story, but the short version is that I'm trying to take Saber back to her room. Hey, are you even listening to me? Well, yeah, sort of. You're lying! You sound like you don't understand at all. I got it, alright? Saber went out to fight on her own, so you rushed off to stop her, right? Something bad happened and you both came back. Something bad happened and you both came back after Saber fainted. So, did I nail it? Uh, yeah, that's amazing. That's exactly what happened. How the fuck did you know? How could I not? Saber was obviously gonna go off on her own. And a master is immediately alerted to a saber entering battle. It wasn't hard to figure out. I see. I guess that's fine then. So Tosaka knew saber would go out by herself. So what are you gonna do? Aren't you gonna take saber back to her room? If you let her sleep here, I'm sure even the servant would catch a cold. Well, yeah, that's why I was gonna take her to her room. I try to lift her up, but it's kind of awkward with Tosaka watching. Sasaka, would you mind carrying Saber? Me? I guess, but would you make me some tea then? I want to hear what happened. Sasaka picks Saber up. Her being so understanding has me a little worried. But since I asked for her for a favor, I better go make some tea.
The soccer carries Saber off toward my room. Meanwhile, I work on preparing tea in the kitchen. She said tea, but I'm assuming she doesn't want green tea. But the only tea, like black tea I have is from the tea bags. Well, if I don't have it, I don't have it. I find my, I tell myself she can complain all she wants and start pouring the hot water over the bag. Shiro, do you have a minute? Tosaku comes back. Yeah, hold on. I'll be right there. I put two teacups on the tray and carry it out to the living room. And there... Sitting next to Tosaka is Saber in her normal clothes. Saber? Why? I thought you were asleep. She was, but it's not like she was going to sleep forever. She woke up. Looks like she used a ton of magical energy at once and just temporarily shut down. It's kind of like an electric breaker tripping before it shorts out. Saber's quiet as Tosaka explains. You... Seeing her back to her usual self, all the frustrations I had earlier come rushing back. Saber, do you have any fucking idea what you tried to do? Of course I do. I made my way to Ryudo Temple and fought Assassin. During our battle, we noticed the presence of a third servant observing us and so suspended our battle. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Damn! I want to know why you went and fought. Are we to revisit this once again? A servant fights. It is what we do. What I would like to know is why you, my master, keep telling me not to fight. Well, that I... I do understand. There's no way around fighting since I've decided to participate in the Holy Grail War. And I know me telling Saber not to fight is me contradicting myself. But even so... I don't want to see something like that happen to her ever again. I would like to ask you instead. You seem to dislike combat. Do you truly expect to survive the Holy Grail War with that attitude? Do you not see that if we continue to follow this policy, we will only end up suffering defeat at the hands of the other masters? It's not like that. I'll fight off anything that may pose a risk to us. I certainly don't intend to just let myself be killed so easily. But aside from that, I just don't want Saber to fight. Wrong! It's not that I dislike fighting, it's just... Ah, oh, fuck. This is so much simpler than that. I... You see, girls shouldn't get hurt. I'm a guy, so I can't let that happen. So I'm gonna fight rather than let you fight. Shiro, you're fucking stupid. You're actually stupid. You gotta be stupid if you think this is gonna make the situation better. What? Are you saying I cannot fight because I'm a woman? Are you out of your mind? A servant protects her master. We will be hurt in the doing and are summoned for that precise purpose. One sex has nothing to do with being a servant. More importantly, are you treating me as a warrior or as a woman? I insist you take back what you have said, Shiro, please. Saber leans toward me, her eyes blazing with fury. But I won't let her change my mind. It's absurd for her to say she's a warrior before she's a woman. How could someone so frail, light enough for me to carry easily, go and behave so recklessly? No way in hell! I'll take back what I said. Sure, you might be strong, but you're still a girl. Don't get worked up over so pointless, something so pointless, you fool. What? It is you who are getting worked up over something so pointless. Are you saying you refuse to let a woman protect you? I am already a heroic spirit, so you must let go of such triv trivialities. It's not trivial at all. Uh, even if you don't think it's important, I do. Besides, it was a mistake from the beginning to have someone else fight on my behalf. I can't. I can't allow someone to protect so I can't allow someone to protect someone as helpless as me. I don't want someone to get hurt in my place. I'm the one who should be doing the saving. I've been working so hard to become the kind of person who can help people just like my old man. Damn it, listen. Just don't fight, Saber. I'll do the fighting. You shouldn't have a problem with that since it'll be the fighting you want. What? That is absurd. 
Do you think a human can fight a servant? You should already understand that you are no match for a servant. Please, recall what happened when Lancer attacked you. Had I not appeared, you would have been killed. So it would go against my any servant. So, so it would be against any servant. You can't know that for sure unless we try. I just wasn't prepared. But now I can come up with tons of strategies. I might even be able to ambush one of them too. Shiro, stop being stupid. For the love of God, stop being stupid. Do not make me laugh. Any defense you would employ would be no more useful, useful, useful than a sheaf of paper. Ah, I can't believe you say that, Saber. You are insulting servants. How can you possibly be so conceited as to believe that you, a mere human, could defeat a heroic spirit? Saber and I glare at each other. Our conversation is going nowhere, and there's no sign of reaching any kind of compromise. You've got it wrong, Saber. Shiro isn't ins insulting servants. This isn't going anywhere as long as you don't understand that much, so I'm stepping in. Rin, what do you mean by that? Well, you see, Shiro genuinely doesn't want you to get hurt. I don't know why, but Shiro is just a giant ball of dedication and goodwill. Am I right? Saber is more important to you than yourself, right? That- No! I never said Saber is important to me. This nigga going tsundere mode. Spare me. You wouldn't be ready to fight yourself if that weren't true. You know damn well you can't be, be the servant, right? But by saying you'll fight even so means Saber is more important to you than yourself. I mean, if she puts it that way, like, fuck, maybe. That's why you'll fight even if it sounds absurd. You'll try to win even if you know you don't have a chance and you don't care if you die in the process. Because, and I don't really know why, and that twisted little mind of yours, other people are more important than you, your, than you are yourself. Well, I don't mean it to be like that, but... Mm. So there you have it. Now you understand, Saber. He's enough of an idiot that he'd even try to protect you against Berserker. So yeah, he's serious when he says he's gonna fight. I don't know how much of Tosaka's words actually make it through to Saber. But Saber takes a deep breath and turns toward me. Shiro. What, Saber? I acknowledge that you have the will to fight and as such I have an idea. What is it? You must train with the sword. I shall teach you as much swordsmanship as time permits. If you accept that condition, then I shall accept your way of thinking. What? Does that mean she's gonna train me? Is this because she acknowledged my will to fight? Hold up, Saber. That whole line of thinking is pointless, like emotional flab. Teach Shiro the way of the sword. There's no way he'll be able to go up against a servant. True, but it is better than doing nothing. At the very least, it should minimize the hesitation he has in battle. I can only bet on Shiro's will and determination, but such is the nature of a real battle. One will never learn if they have no aptitude for it to begin with. Well, I guess if you put it that way, you're right. You're never ready for a fist fight until you've actually experienced one in the past. Yes, that is why I would like to try once, nay, as many times as, po as time allows. I would like Shiro to experience what death in battle feels like so he might grow accustomed to battle. The two of them are talking pretty casually about some scary shit. Hold on a minute. I never agreed to any- Okay then, I'll teach him about Magecraft. If Saber's gonna train his body, I'll enrich his mind. Well, that was part of our initial plan anyway, so I guess I'll begin the formal training tomorrow. Yes, please do so. If you can do that, I can concentrate on training here with my sword. Good, good. Now that's settled, let's break for the night. Looks like tomorrow's gonna be busy. So Sokka waves goodbye and disappears into the outbuilding. I shall rest as well. You should do the same, Shiro. I intend to work you hard in the dojo tomorrow. She gives a short bow and goes back to her room. All that remains in the living room is two cups of untouched tea and one dumbfounded boy. 
I never agree to this. My words go on her. Anyway, what was already a confusing situation has grown a hell of a lot more complicated. I can't even begin to imagine what will happen today. I'm going to sleep. I should at least save my energy. Everything starts with the body. Well, yeah. The only thing I can do is cling on to my fragile body in hopes that my body is strong enough. I'll be able to endure whatever torture they might throw at me. Holy crap! That was eventful! That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, I'll read them all, tap into the next one. Man, Shiro kind of pisses me off. I like him. Shiro kind of pisses me off. He doesn't like... Just the... Uh, he, he just got that typical main character. I'm going to say something, but I'm not going to say it in the right way. And I'm never going to get my point across properly. What? He's got that he's got that main character shit. And it honestly, it, uh, that always pisses me off. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just sitting here screaming like... Instead of talking about her being a girl and shouldn't fight, you need to bring up the fact that she went off without your permission and tell her that it's not that you didn't plan on fighting in the first place, it's that you wanted to be more prepared to fight instead of rushing into what could be a trap. Like, I was fucking screaming that in my head. Like, this nigga was pissing me off. But, man, that fight was fucking gas. Holy shit. That's the end of the episode. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, read a month after into the next one. I'm gonna leave my Discord link down below. And if y'all fuck if y'all fuck with your boy, you know, join the Discord. Well, you know, once we get shit popping in there, I'm gonna be doing like little what you call this, uh little events and shit. We all gonna be talking. I wanna communicate with y'all and shit. And we're gonna be doing motherfucking uh shit. What that shit called? Uh oh, y'all gonna get notifications when I drop, you know? So peace out. I love y'all. Tap into the next one.